Almost all video cameras that have been released in the last couple of years offer some form of video output. HDMI output is commonly found on mirrorless cameras like the Panasonic GH5 or Sony A7S Mark II, whereas SDI output is commonly found on high-end camcorders like the DVX200 or digital cinema cameras like the Sony FS7. But what's the difference? That's what we're going to find out. Now first, a little history lesson. SDI stands for Serial Digital Interface, which is part of a family of digital video interfaces first standardized by SEMTI, which stands for the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, back in 1989. Now, I am by no means a video engineer, nor is this going to be a discussion about video engineering. I'm here to discuss the differences between the two connections as it pertains to your filmmaking workflow. HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface and has a 19-pin connection as opposed to SDI, which has a single pin. But we'll come back to HDMI. Now, SDI has been updated since 1989, but the advent of High Definition, HDSDI was created, which stands for, you guessed it, High Definition Serial Digital Interface. And it carries a higher grade signal at what is called a nominal data rate of 1.485 gigabits a second. Additional standards have been recently introduced as 4K and UHD resolutions have become more popular. Dual Link HD SDI was used to handle those larger data rates, providing a nominal data rate of 2.970 gigabits a second. However, 3G SDI came along in 2006 and made it a single connection that could carry an equal data rate, replacing the Dual Link HD SDI. Less cables equals less hassle. In 2015, 6G SDI and 12G SDI were published as standards by SEMTI as it became pretty clear that both professionals and amateurs were shooting everything in 4K UHD. 6G SDI nominal data rate is 6 gigabits a second. 12G SDI nominal data rate is 12 gigabits a second. Notice the pattern? With more data, faster speeds are required. SDI also has the ability to transmit uncompressed, unencrypted digital video signals, making it ideal for professional use, and is why television broadcasters use SDI as their standard signal transmission. Physically, SDI is a simple coax KO that can be run up to about 980 feet or 300 meters before losing signal. They use what is called a BNC connector, which is an acronym that has numerous definitions according to the internet. The bayonet needle concealment appeared to be the most accurate, but my favorite had to be the British Naval Connector. It was originally designed for military to carry out radio signals and has remained in use because it is a simple and safe locking connection that can now carry uncompressed video signals with ease. They come in male and female forms. I should also mention another type of connector, DIN 1.0-2.3, otherwise known as Mini SDI. It's not very common, but the Blackmagic Video System does use this. High-end digital cinema cameras like the Sony FS7, Canon C300 Mark II, or the Panasonic Vericam LT all have SDI outputs because they're used in professional scenarios where having a locking BNC connector that can travel almost a thousand feet is critical to getting the job done. Okay, now back to HDMI. If SDI is professional, then HDMI is clearly consumer. HDMI was originally designed for connecting consumer devices like your cable box, Blu-ray player, or gaming console to your HDTV as it replaced standard definition analog video standards. Remember those uh, red, white, and yellow RCA cables on your Nintendo 64? However, HDMI has quickly entered the video production industry with the rival of prosumer camera models like DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. The connection comes in three sizes. Type A is full HDMI, Type C is mini HDMI, and Type D is micro HDMI. It's important to note that all three sizes do the same thing and there's no loss in quality. All you risk is connection loss because HDMI does not lock. It's a very delicate connection and the smaller you get, the more delicate it becomes, so try to keep that in mind. For the commenters out there, yes, there are camera cages that will provide some sort of lock, but that's just an added expense. And just like SDI, HDMI has different capacities depending on the signal you want to transmit. For instance, HDMI 1.4, standard HDMI cable can carry up to 1080i and 720p. High-speed HDMI cable can carry up to 1080p, 4K, 30Hz, 3D, and deep color. Now in 2015, HDMI 2.0 specifications were introduced that supported 4K, 60p, Rec 2020, and HDR. And just this past year, HDMI 2.1 specification was released, designed to support 48 gigabits a second, which can carry a 4K, 5K, 8K, and 10K at 120Hz. More data, more speed is required. So then what makes it consumer then, right? Well, for one, HDMI's connection does not lock. HDMI signal cannot be run 980 feet. In fact, it's only like 15 feet. There are longer cables that are manufactured, but it's not recommended. If you need a longer run, you're better off getting an HDMI extender, but that costs more money and usually requires power. 
Thus, HDMI is not usually the professional's choice. But if you want to run your Sony a7S Mark II into an Atomus Ninja Inferno via HDMI to get uncompressed 4K video, it could be a perfect match. Just be weary of the non-locking connection. So there you have it, the difference between SDI and HDMI. Both have their pros and cons, SDI mission critical but more expensive, HDMI less expensive but risky. Like any piece of gear in this industry, it really comes down to your application. If you think you need it, get it. What's your connection of choice? Let us know in the comments below. This is Jake with B&H, just keep shooting. Definition serial digital interface, and it carries a higher, as I itch my arm, <laughs> it carries, this is natural. Yep. <laughs>